Mesdames et messieurs, bonjour à toutes, bonjour à tous, quel plaisir, quel régal de vous accueillir ici du côté du bowling La Sphère. On est à Fontaine-le-Comte, quelques kilomètres seulement de la localité de Poitiers. Évidemment, la 14e édition de la Bowling Promotion Tour, le Master Series continue avec deux masters à mes côtés. Évidemment, le vice-champion d'Europe face au vice-champion de Norvège. Ça va être un match de tous les vices. On va découvrir tout de suite lequel des deux va tirer son épingle du jeu et progresser davantage dans ce tournoi. Thank you, Mark Chauvet, for that introduction to our 12th of 15 matches we'll be bringing you as part of the 2023-2024 season of the Bowling Promotion Tour Cupica AMF Masters Series Step Ladder. As Mark mentioned, today it is number four qualifier Frenchman Kenny B.O. against the number five qualifier 22-year-old Halvar Hagen Nielsen, who is coming off a 226-204 win <laughs> over Belgian Louis Bonnet. And it will be... Nielsen kicking us off on the left lane. Again, we are on the Gateway Arch 42-foot oil pattern. We've seen a lot of urethane go down the lane, a lot of purple hammers, and no different here from Nielsen. And Halvar with a convincing win in his last match. Let's see how he kicks things off here. Halvar averaging 219.06 across his 18 games, while B.O., averaging 219.67, so these two players very closely matched in terms of score. And there is a great shot to kick things off for Nielsen. Slaps the 10 out. And let's have another look at this release. You can see the beautiful swing and look at the release of this young man. Gets through the shot very cleanly, turns up through the pocket, six pin into the channel, slaps the 10, and a perfect start for Halvar Hagen Nielsen. We have seen Nielsen in the U.S. competing in New England bowling events as well as the Northeast Megabucks tournament over the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday in 2023 and hope to see him over again in the U.S. Now our first look at Frenchman Kenny Bio and look at the power on this young man. Both these players one-handed style but they both have a lot of power because they have great fundamentals. And here is B.O.'s first shot. And gets it out to the spot, turns up, comes a little bit high, but trips the six. Left-hander's best friend, the trip six. And that will match the opening strike of Nielsen. These two players have some history. In fact, they are teammates for Team Worlds, and they're up against Team Sirius in the finals of the team competition, which we'll be bringing you on this same YouTube channel. And here's the other, sh the, uh, the repeat of B.O.'s shot. You can see it gets out to the fifth or sixth board out there and comes up just a bit high, head pin into the sidewall, comes back and just tips out that six pin. We've seen quite a few matches bowled on this Gateway Arch oil pattern, and we're starting to see some reactions in the mid lane. And let's see how these bowlers continue to adjust to that transition. We're perfect so far. And let's see how Kenny makes out on this left lane. And gets it down to basically the same spot. It looked like the same spot as the other shot, but you can see how that ball picked up in the mid lane and came raging through the face, as we call it, to leave the 2-4-7 combination. B.O. also teamed with Monica Shack Nielsen in the mixed doubles competition. Monica Shack Nielsen won our first three matches in this same stepladder, defeating Gerald Danson, Stanislaw Nodine, and Gwendol Jolief before falling to Gaton Carew. And here is cross lane to the 2 4 7, makes the spare, and now 20 in the first for B.O. And now can Nielsen double up here? And again, you see both these players throwing purple hammers. We are at Bowling Sphere in Fontaine le Comte, a town about 200 miles southwest of Paris. You do see Bruno Badone and Marc Chavet offering the French commentary in the background. My name is Bruce Hall, and I'm your international commentator for these matches. And let's see how 
Nielsen fares in his second frame. Gets it out to the spot. Looks good. Turns it up. Dead flush. And a double for Nielsen. Picking up where he left off. He won his first match 226 to 204 over Louis Bonnet. Throwing shots just like this. And look at the nice, long, fluid arm swing. And look at the knee bend. Gets through the shot. Stays shoulders over his knees. And gets all that leverage through to the ball. And it turns up perfectly through the pocket for a double for Nielsen. I'd like to thank Cubica AMF. They have signed on for a three-year commitment to sponsor this master Series, so you will definitely see more of these matches in years to come. And you could be part of this tour if you'd like to be. Just check out the Bowling Promotion website. And it uh, looks like left a little bit. Comes in and still slaps the 10 out. Looks like he pulled it down the oil a little bit, but he got all of it. And it came up just high enough to kick the 10 out, did Nielsen. So you can see this ball is left. It definitely doesn't get out to the same break point as his last shot on that lane, but it's enough. Comes up and the 6-pin gets to the channel and just does nudge out the 10 for the opening 3 for Nielsen. Now, so Bio in an early 20-pin hole here. Let's see if he can dig himself out. Winner of this match faces Gregory Rius, who is our number three qualifier. He averaged 220 in his qualifying. After that, it's Jaime Gonzalez, last year's winner. And after that, it's Martin Larson. So and he got that one out. Oh, good slap of the seven pin there for B.O. Another good shot. These guys are pretty much hitting the pocket, except for B.O.'s second shot. Look at this ball get out to just even left of those. See those dark boards? It's right around seven and eight board. So he gets it up and comes up to slap the seven out. And unfortunately down by 20 because of that shot on the left lane. Let's see what he does here. You'll have to make some kind of a move. The trick is if you move in to catch more oil, you can get the ball to underreact. We call that over-under. Gets it into the oil. It underreacts. It comes in for a three-pin or you know, at worst a washout or something like that. Or if you don't make the move enough, it still goes through the beak again. So let's see what he does here. Gets it out to the spot. Definitely left of the spot. It gets the carry. And I think he did make the move to get the ball further down the lane and left at the break point compared to where he was last, compared to where he was last shot. You can see that gets just to the left of those dark boards. Comes up a little bit high, but he does, but he does carry the strike. So cuts the lead to 10 now. And let's see what Nielsen will do. And Nielsen lined up pretty much the same on both lanes because he's done nothing but strike in these first three frames. Let's see what he does here. Another good shot. Rips through it. Gets it out. Turns it up. Dead flush. Four in a row for Halvar Hagen Nielsen to get back to his 20-pin lead through four. And look at the... Beautiful swing. He's got that cupped arm and rips up through that shot. And all that power going to the ball. High flush. And pretty much perfect execution there by Mr. Nielsen. Now, Halvar, what will he do on the left lane? It's hard to make any adjustments if you're locked into the pocket. So let's see what he does here. We have not seen a 300 game in these matches. Could we see one here? And gets that one left. Oh, he comes back. Gets it out to the dry. It reacts off the corner. Comes up and slaps the 7 and the 10 out for the front 5 for Halvar Hagen Nielsen. Look at how ball, how this ball's out to the right. It gets out to the... Boy, that's got to be the 5 or the 4 board even. Comes back up to the pocket and gets enough to carry both the 7 and the 10. I think you're going to see his reaction. He says, uh-oh, that's right, that's right. Turn it up. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So that's using a little bit of the area that he's been given, but 
gives him the front five for Halvar Hagen Nielsen. Can he go all the way? Now B.O. down by 30. Can he double up here and actually get it down to 10 despite Nielsen's front five? Down out to the spot. Another good shot and another perfect strike for Kenny B.O. Good stuff. Gets it back down to 20 pins. He can cut the lead to 10 here despite Nielsen's front five. This has been the trickier lane, this left lane. Let's have a look at this shot. Again, look at the two dark boards. The ball gets right to those two dark boards right there. That's the seven and the eight board. That's his break point. He's been very consistent around that point in the mid lane and the ball turning perfectly through the pocket. As we said, you can be part of this tour. They do qualifying and the TV recording the end of September, early October each year. So check out the Bowling Promotion website and you could be part of this fun and exciting tour around the country of France. And gets that one out. Left a little high again. That left lane has got quite the jumpy mid, mid lane and that's what happened to B.O. there. So it comes up high for an eight count. And unfortunately, that is going to put him further in the hole and the door is really open for Nielsen now to extend his lead. Again, it's just left of those dark boards so he is getting it where he needs to. It's just so jumpy there for, uh, because of the other matches we've seen on these pair. Again, this is our 12th match. We have not had a re-oil, so we certainly have seen some transition here on these lanes. And over for the spare on the 6-10. Good cover there. And again, B.O. cruising at a 218 pace where Halvar Hagen Nielsen already in the 230s so Nielsen enjoying a 22 pin lead at this point getting up to throw his sixth shot can he go all the way this to get him halfway to a 300 game and let's see again don't make any adjustments if you're perfect and he doesn't. That's left up the lane. He's got, oh boy, he's really opened up the lane. That was left of target a little bit. He used that hold that's out there. He was able to push it down the lane and carry. And here he goes. And you can see it's a little bit left of target. Just doesn't quite get out to the break point. But it turns up perfectly through the pocket and gives him six in a row. Halfway home for Halvar Hagen Nielsen. And the way he's throwing it with the area he has, boy, we have to have to like our chances here for the 300 game. And another good stroke. Gets it out to the dry. Turn it up. Oh! Mixer seven. A good shot. Just a little bit late to the pocket. Leaves the mixer seven, maybe a little bit of the announcer's curse there. And you can see he got through it well. He didn't want to pull it like he had the last one. He got it to the spot very nicely. Could easily have gone. The head pin goes into the sideboard and misses the seven pin. I think he likes this shot better than he's liked the last couple. He turns it up, turns it up. Please carry. And unfortunately, he won't go. He's like, okay. Let's make our spare and enjoy our 32 pin lead now. And switches to the plastic ball straight at the 7 and goes by the 7 pin. And that will give some pins back to B.O. Let's see if he can take advantage of it. And you can see he gets up and gives it a pull. Kind of yanks across it. Maybe stuck at the line a little bit. And now 
can B.O. come back and double here. You could actually get this within less than 10 pins if he could double here. B.O. still with 250 available to him. And Nielsen with 267 available. So certainly not out of it by any means because of the miss by Nielsen. And that's right to the spot. A good shot, but there's a weak seven. Doesn't get the roll. And can't get the carry there. So both players seeing some carry issues here in the seventh frame, leaving seven pins. And you can see this is right out to the spot. I think he threw the shot on the right lane that he needed on the left lane because the right lane's a little bit tighter. I think he really pushed it to the spot. Just came up a hair late off the spot behind the head pin and leaves the weak seven. And now for the spare ball, goes right at the seven pin and cleans it up perfectly. Fortunately, now still 31 or 21 behind, we should say. And now in desperate need of strikes here at the back end of this game to make up this 20-pin deficit. Yeah, they're even in count, and 20 pins in marks is Nielsen ahead right now. Other matches in our step ladder so far, Gaton Carew, who said defeated... Um, Monica Shack Nielsen then lost to uh, Sophie Kiergaard Nielsen. And then she beat her twin Karen before falling to Anthony Trigaudet of France. Trigaudet then beat Jack Blythe and Heloise Cortin before losing to Bonnet, who then lost to Halmar Hagen Nielsen. So. And, and now high for a six pin. This is the bowler's biggest problem when you have seven pin, six pin. Again, we have the tighter lane on the right for the lefty, the drier lane on the left, and that's how the lanes are playing. He comes up and leaves a weak 7 on the left lane, followed by a 6-pin on the right lane. He had a 6-10 high, his last shot on this lane. So, unfortunately, Kenny B.O. unable to dial in the strikes here, getting a reason around the pocket, but cannot put the string of strikes together. And now he's got a 236 maximum with Nielsen going at a 237 pace, meaning if he were to just get strikes and spares on the way out, he would have 237. So might need a little help, actually, from Nielsen at this point. Would be O. Again, we do have mixed doubles finals coming up. We have team finals coming up. If you hit like and subscribe on this YouTube channel, we are over 32,000 subscribers which is very cool. I'm really glad and hope you're enjoying this great international competition brought to you by Bowling Promotion and Mr. Bruno Bedone, our most excellent promoter. And Nielsen now just needs marks to lock this up. And there's a balk. I wonder what happened there. If he kind of started and stopped, didn't like the feel in his hand. There's no shot clock, so no no harm, no foul. Actually, new rules on the PBA Tour this year that if you have a shot clock violation, it's not going to be a fine anymore. It will actually be a foul and zero for the shot. So that will be a very interesting development for TV shows for the P PBA Tour. And now Nielsen gets this shot off, straight up the lane, turns it up, and saws the rack. That was a very unusual hit. And the uh, lanes didn't even recognize that four pin. It was such a strange hit. I, have, I don't think I've ever seen that. It was a can opener hit. And indeed, the three pin and the seven pin made it out. Let's watch what happened here. It looks like a... Four pin was left, but maybe that was the two pin sliding over. Let's see what happened here. So the ball comes up for this can opener. No, it just stays a four pin. 
just nothing hits it. It just rocks, and for some reason, the machine thought it was a strike. So that was a very unusual hit for Nielsen, but again, just needs marks here to lock up this match. And he'll go over to his plastic ball. We saw him flag a left side spare earlier, that 7-pin just in the last frame. And so now we have our setup, and let's see how we do here. Once again, Gregory Reuse awaits, and then Jaime Gonzalez, last year's winner, and then Martin Larson, so a murderer's row of great players coming up here on this master stepladder. And no trouble there on the four pin. And that will preserve his lead. And coming in now to the last couple of frames, Nielsen just needs to stay clean here. And he should lock up this match. Again, a 21 pin advantage for Nielsen. 236 available once again for BO. And Nielsen cruising at a 237 pace. He would need to strike here to not lose any count against that 237. Let's see what he does. Gets it out once again to the pocket, and there's the risk of moving in. He comes in and he gets it into the oil. It does not hook through the midpoint. And watch this ball. It does what we call go forward. Watch this. It gets here, and where it's supposed to slow down and turn left, it just goes forward through the pins and leaves the bucket. The entire dinner bucket, that's the two, four, five, eight, and loses quite a bit of count. And indeed, B.O. with some new life here, if he can get up and strike out, he would force Nielsen to double in the 10th, assuming he makes this bucket. Nielsen hooks at the bucket, turn it up, perfect cover there. Helgar Haven, Hel Haven Helgar Nielsen, good shot there. And now B.O. really needs to go off the sheet here to put some pressure on Nielsen. B.O. again, 236 possible. Nielsen now at a 233 pace, so we're B.O. to try to figure out how to triple here, then Nielsen would need to double. Let's see how we do. Winner faces Gregory Reuse in our next match. B.O. taking his time, has been nibbling around the pocket. with a 7-pin last time in this lane and a 6-pin on the other. Let's see what he does here. Gets that way out. Turns up and, oh, a 6-8 in the pocket. He says, I left a 7-pin. I got it out to the dry. The ball turned up nicely and comes up for the 6-8 split. And that actually might be the match. If he can make this and then double, he might be able to force Nielsen to mark in the 10th. But that's a terrible break for Kenny B.O. on it was a pretty good shot, actually. And it cannot convert. And so, well, maximum 2.13 right now. And all Nielsen will have to do is keep it on the lane in the 10th, and that will be that. Boy, a very, very unfortunate break for Kenny B.O. And he put three together and then just lost his look. Came high for a 6-10, and then it was a weak 7, then a 6-pin, and now a 6-8 in the pocket. So really just that one shot out of the pocket. And uh, unfortunately, B.O. lost his carry, and it will cost him this match. And of course, now we get it out to the spot. Turns up perfectly. Gives him a strike. But it will be Halvar Hagen Nielsen moving on to face Gregory Reuse in our round 13 of 15, so we're getting down to it here. 
And please stay tuned for the interview between Mark Chavez and Kenny B.O. at the conclusion of this match. Once again, my name is Bruce Hall, and I'm your international commentator. It's my privilege to be part of this exciting bowling promotion tour competition. Thanks to Bruno Badone, our most excellent promoter. And another good shot. That one jumped off the dry, comes up high. And it will be a 2-0 game for B.O. Unfortunately, he looks so good. He went strikes pair next three. He was already in the two teens after five. Has the run 6 8 and was not able to put any doubles together after that. What a nice conversion there on the baby split. And we we'll leave B.O. with 2 0 3. And now Nielsen just needs to keep it on the lane. And that will be that. One pin is a winner. I think he can manage that. <laughs> do it. Little high gets the trip four. Very nice. We mentioned the different cities that were visited. They go to six games in Bayou, six games in in Rene, and six games here in Poitiers, Fontaine, Le Compte. So various places in the northwestern coast and western parts of France. So they, they get around on a nice tour of France as part of this. The, the, it's about a week and a half of qualifying that they have. And then they have the finals here at the Bowling Sphere and Fontaine Le Compte. So, really exciting bowling promotion tour that they do each year. And Nielsen now for the victory lap. And another shot, dead nuts in the pocket. He will be in the 240, so even if B.O. had struck out, Nielsen will take care of business. Once again, stay tuned for the interview between Mark Chavez and Kenny B.O., and we look forward to our next match Match number 13, and it will be Gregory Reuse against Halvar Hagen Nielsen. And Nielsen with just one more shot here. We'll wrap up his 240 game. Very nice. 226 last game, looking at 240 here. And what will we be able to do against Ruiz? And give him 243. Very nice game by Halvar Hagen Nielsen. And the hug between the competitors. And once again, please stick around for our interview. And thanks everyone for watching. And we hope to see you back on this same YouTube channel for match number 13. Here's a slow motion of one of Nielsen's great shots. You can see he gets it right out to those dark boards. Turns it up. That's the shot in the first where he slapped that 10 pin out. And here is a good look at B.O. Getting it out again to those dark boards right on 7 and 8. And turn it up through the pocket. And there's his first strike with that friendly trip 6. So alongside the runner-up from the European Championships, Kenny Bio in the flesh out of France. Kenny, it was a difficult game indeed for multiple reasons. Maybe reason number one, a little bit of pressure coming out there. Halver obviously had a game before you. Uh, he was uh, well attuned to the to the lanes. You had to discover that and fight against yourself in the first part. Oui, ben Alvar venait d'arriver. Uh, Alvar était uh, déjà sur les pistes, venait d'arriver. Alvar était en confiance parce qu'il venait de gagner son match avec un très bon score. Je venais d'arriver et je ne connaissais pas trop les pistes. Ça m'a un petit peu dérangé. En plus, il a bien, très bien joué, donc uh, tant mieux. And so, and so Alvar obviously had the advantage. He, was, uh, he had one match before that he performed really optimally in. I had to discover the lanes. It was a little more difficult for myself. Also, Kenny talking about the performance of the Norwegian opponent, shooting six strikes in a row. That's got to add a little pressure onto your shoulders as well. Oui, tout à fait. C'est vraiment difficile de pouvoir suivre après six strikes. On on doit juste patienter qu'il fasse une erreur pour euh, entrer dans la brèche. Et malheureusement, euh, la brèche s'est présentée trop tard et je n'ai pas réussi à la saisir. So for me, it was difficult after those six strikes in a row. You needed to have some sort of moment where the opponent um, is not able to perform. It took a long time for me to get there. It was too little, too late, says Kenny Bio. Thank you very much, Kenny.